Governor Cuomo's quiet move to disband the Moreland Commission has snowballed into a full-blown political probe by the feds. U.S. Attorney Preet Bharara is determined to finish the digging that the Corruption Commission started. And the U.S. Education Chief taking a strong stand by backing Common Core. However, not everybody is singing the test praises. The new test rules brought out the testiness in some parents and some teachers today in New York will take you there. And it tears down homes and it breaks down self-esteem and it can be, as we've seen, all too often deadly. We're gonna tell you how one local nonprofit is fighting domestic violence and building up the spirit of survivors. Good evening and welcome to RFL. I am Richard French and thank you so much for joining us this Friday evening, April 11th. And tonight, we start with a look at political corruption, which some would say is riddling the walls in Albany. Now, over the last three years, just under a dozen New York politicians have been convicted of committing crimes like mail fraud, tax evasion, bribery, even embezzlement. Now, all of this double dealing is what forced Governor Cuomo to stomp his feet and to get the Moreland Commission established. Our obligations as elected officials is first and foremost to make sure the wrongdoers are punished and that the punishment is sure and swift. And second, to make sure there is a system in place that is working to prevent the wrongdoing in the first place. Remember draining the swamp? Well, that was July of last year. That sound bite you just heard from the governor. Now let's fast forward to today. Governor Cuomo moved to quietly disband the commission he fought so hard to create. Now federal prosecutor, U.S. Attorney for New York, Preet Bahara, he wants some answers. And we'll go through the files, and if there are cases to bring uh, that are appropriate for us to bring, we'll bring them. If they're appropriate for us to further refer to local uh, and other federal prosecutors, we'll do that. So you know, we just want to get our hands on the files and make sure that, that the work is getting done. And that was from a recent radio interview. And Bahara went on to say that the sequence of these events mean the disbanding of the commission gives the appearance, although I'm sure it is not the intent, that investigations potentially significant to the public interest have been bargained away as part of the negotiated arrangement between legislative and executive leaders, end quote. Now, the move by Bahara, as you can imagine, being applauded by Governor Cuomo's challenger, one Rob Astorino. The U.S. attorney is rightly surprised that Governor Cuomo abruptly shut down his Moreland Commission that was supposed to investigate corruption in the New York State Legislature. New York was considered the most corrupt state in America when Governor Cuomo took office, and it's only gone downhill since. All right, let's bring in our panel here tonight. We're joined by Dominic Carter, political journalist and author who knows not only Albany, but New York City very well. And New York State Assemblywoman Shelley Meyer, who is in none of these probes here, but she represents Yonkers in the great city of Albany. And Basil Smichael, political analyst, adjunct professor at Columbia, didn't work at CUNY as well here, and he's got a big background both in politics and all things New York. Gentlemen, um, Shelley, as always, thank you. Okay. Um, Dom, let me first start with you. Translate for the general public that the U.S. attorney, who didn't have to get involved, not only got involved, but said what he did, and while he may have weighed the words here a little bit, bargaining away, uh, that's strong stuff. Very strong language. We normally don't see a U.S. attorney intervene like this. Now, this is all preliminary. But he's not ruling out a full investigation. He's not ruling out forwarding to uh, the appropriate authorities. This is exactly the making of a nightmare for Governor Cuomo. Frankly, this is the only type of thing that could take him down. Public polling shows that the voters don't know who Rob Astorino is. 65% don't know who he is. Is this type of situation an unknown that can happen during a campaign that could mean very bad news for Governor Cuomo? I'm not saying that he's involved in any right. of these uh, uh, shenanigans, but the fact of the matter is it, it looks funny, if you will, that he shut down this commission. And now, someone who's got a bigger platform, when it's the mayor against the governor, the governor wins. But when it's a U.S. attorney against the governor, the U.S. attorney has the bigger platform. And Shelley, it's not just the usual suspects. His political opponents saying this. You pick up every editorial page of every daily in the city, from the Post to the Times. Um, they're giving the governor you-know-what. Um, were you surprised after all the fanfare, after everything he said three years ago, that quietly in the budget he said, oh, by the way, goodbye Moreland Commission? I really wasn't, and I think that the uh, criticism is hyped up for politics. I really do. 
I was there during some of the tough times in Albany. I was there when the Moreland Commission was started. You know what the Moreland Commission was focused on? Outside income of certain legislators that were potentially, and who knows, uh, inappropriately receiving money and then it influenced their judgment. That's what the focus was. It wasn't some broad ranging, everything is wrong, because already when things happen, as we know from these other indicted and convicted politicians, the district attorney, the attorney general, the U.S. attorney, there's jurisdiction to go after these guys. Frankly, the prosecutors have not been aggressive enough. And being more specific, the Albany DA, which has jurisdiction over the capital district here, where these guys are obviously doing their business, has been remarkably silent. Dominic talked about it last night. But, but one of the other challenges is some conduct is offensive but not unlawful. And the Moreland was looking at that as well. So I don't know that you make that into there's this cesspool of Ill illegality that he sort of walked away. But is they this a product a little bit of the governor's own creation? He talked about draining the swamp. He talked about all this. And then it did seem to the outside person, maybe we're jaded after all the years of what's gone on in Albany, that quietly it seemed like it was a political chip that got traded for a deal. Well, I, see, here's where I disagree with you. I'm telling you, I believe what they were looking at was really these narrow issues. And then once we reach some reform in the budget, I don't think it was enough. I'm in favor of much stronger reform and stronger enforcement of existing laws. Uh, I think it was perfectly fair to say, you know what, this has done its job. Now, it's, too, it's unfortunate that the U.S. Attorney took, you know, as Dominic is saying, really like a broadside. I think it's unjustified. And also, you know, here's my problem as someone who sits there. There's a lot of highly ethical people who are the majority, who go there for the right reasons. These people who engage in criminal and unlawful or inappropriate conduct, they're ruining it for us. Isn't that more we compelling reason why the Moreland Commission no. should even go further? Because you'll get out no. and root out the bad no. actors? No, because the Moreland Commission did not have unlimited jurisdiction to go after things that were already criminal and could have been referred and should have been referred, and some of them were. The Attorney General's gone after mm -hmm. a bunch of former colleagues of mine. Yeah, you know, my guess is it was established what Cuomo did um, in establishing it and then pushing forward was to go after the low-hanging fruit. The ones that were there and going to come out, you know, w within a regulative, relatively short period of time in his administration, and he said, "Look, you know, we, I, I, I don't want that happening because it'll, it'll take away from my agenda." But now that that's cleaned up, now that there's reform in the budget, I think it's, you know, it's appropriate to some extent to put it away. But the reality is, going back to to, to Dominic's point. We have seen this before. We saw it with Rudy, Rudy Giuliani. Um, in some respects, we've seen it with a Chris Christie, where as a prosecutor, you're saying, you know, I think there's enough here. I'm going to go after it. Maybe there's some ambition beyond the U.S. Attorney's Office um, that, that's there. But, but the timing yeah. and the appearance of it, even if you're right, Jill, it just didn't smell or look right, you know? And it, it did at least, and I'm hardly alone here, give the impression and certainly it's a gift to the Republican opposition this year, time out here. Oh, how all of a sudden did this in the dead of night get, get pushed through in the last second budget deal? It, it just seemed that it went away quietly, and given the strange political bedfellows the governor's made here, it seemed like yet another kind of chip that got traded for something else, even if it didn't. The perception I, is sometimes more I important than reality. I understand the perception, and I'm suggesting that we haven't seen what Preet Bharara finds from the files. In fact, he may find that, again, some conduct is inappropriate or offensive and not unlawful. And I but suspect... But let's say he does find that, okay? That yes. he doesn't need it. Doesn't that then beg the question, well, why all of a sudden is the commission getting shut down? Why didn't the governor refer this stuff to the, uh, the district attorney in Albany? Because why the, wasn't that if step it's taken? not unlawful, the governor's had a series of very proactive reform agenda items that... The assembly's adopted many. The Senate mm. has not. You know, we should do better with reform. It doesn't take a commission, to, it, and it shouldn't take a commission to force us to enact stronger enforcement, put money where our mouth is, and get rid of the bad apples. We got to do it. And I don't think the Moreland Commission is the way to do it. All right. Um, when we come back, we're going to come back to an issue I know that's very close to you guys, and that is education in New York. You got parents, teachers, students. They literally took the streets today in parts of New York to speak out against Common Core. We're going to have that story and more coming up after the break. <laughs> 